Celebrating over a hundred years of electric transportation in Toronto was not made easy by a cost-cutting fight by the TTC to scrap the electric trolleybus system. The citizens of the City of Toronto waged a battle against suburban interests in trying to keep the buses running, but to no avail. This video chronicles the last days of the ETB system, plus some vintage clips of past vehicles that rove the routes. I'm Ray Nielsen. For the next two hours, join me as I show Toronto's electric trolley buses route by route. The streets of Toronto. Well, a familiar sight is about to disappear from the streets of Toronto. The TTC is kicking off 1992 by pulling the plug on its aging fleet of electric trolley buses. Over the next two weeks, all 139 of the vehicles will be mothballed for budgetary reasons. The trolleys will be replaced by noisier, more polluting diesel buses. It is supposed to be a temporary move, but it could become permanent. And as our environment specialist Linda Boyle reports, the TTC's action comes as other North American cities are turning to trolleys because of their obvious environmental advantages. For more than 40 years, the trolley coach has been humming through Toronto. A rubber tire bus run by electricity delivered from overhead wires, it is emissionless and practically noiseless. A chariot cherished by those concerned about the urban environment. But the trolley is being shunned by the Toronto Transit Commission. Because of their age, it says they're too expensive to maintain. And they can't afford to buy new ones now that the recession has cut into revenues. Trolleys, granted, are good on the environment in terms of the streets on which they run. But if the price of that is that you have to severely restrict service in other areas, um, and hence drive people into their cars and not into buses. You're just creating a pollution problem somewhere else. The decision was no sooner taken two weeks ago than the trolleys started disappearing from the streets. And by mid-January, the entire fleet of 139 coaches will be parked in a lot somewhere. Mothballing, the commission calls it. It really appears that uh, the trolley coach system, if it is mothballed, will in, in actual fact be abandoned unless there's something that uh, is done or some money that's put into uh, keeping the system running. Ray Nielsen is a video producer who's been chronicling on tape what he believes is the end of the trolley era in Toronto. Well, this is coach uh, 9339, and that's the last run of the, uh, the bus from the top of the uh, route. Well, I guess it'll be quite valuable footage. Uh, you know, in 15 or 20 years. Mothballing is the first step in the elimination of the trolley buses. Uh, it's going to be hard to get them back on the road once they've been mothballed. The chairman of the Toronto Transit Commission is a trolley advocate who was outvoted on the issue. Years, and I think to get rid of them is a long-term um, negative decision. It may help in the short term in terms of our budgetary crunch, but in the long term, economically and environmentally, it's not a good decision. Toronto's decision to retire the trolley bus is bucking the North American trend. Los Angeles is just starting to use trolleys because of strict fuel emission standards there. And cities like Vancouver, Edmonton and San Francisco all have modern fleets of trolley buses. While in Toronto, the trolley may soon be a thing of the past. In many cities, it is now the vehicle of the future. I believe that when you're going to do something major, uh, which, gonna, which affects the environment, there should be studies and there should the public should be involved and the public should be aware of the consequences of, of this type of action. It kind of bothers me that I'm just finding out that I didn't know about this at all. I mean, who made these decisions? As I understand it, it's pollution and cost that are factors. And they've just put out this great big glossy expensive brochure hanging in all the buses. If cost's such a big deal, if environment's such a big deal, how can they afford to put out that glossy thing that's not recyclable? While for some, the loss of the trolleys may be the cruelest cut of all, the Toronto Transit Commission believes it is the best decision for these hard times. It will decide some time in 1992 whether to make this decision permanent, whether this really will be the end of the line for the time-worn trolley coast. Linda Boyle, Global News, Toronto.
The Junction ETB route was introduced in the late 1960s when the Dundas streetcar line was cut back to Dundas West Station due to the extension of the Bloor subway to Islington. The first buses to travel the route to the Runnymede Loop were 48-seat 1953 Brill-built T4 coaches. It was a short but busy line and for a time had heavy loads. The Junction 40 line made connections with the Annette ETB line, the Weston Road ETB line, and the Runnymede and Lambton buses. The Brills were converted to flyers in 1974, and the line ran until the fall of 1991, when subway station construction caused the line to be dieselized. The Young 97 line was introduced in 1954 when the Young subway opened and streetcar service north of Eglinton was abandoned. It provided local transportation to city residents between the city limits and the Eglinton subway station. T4 Brill coaches were used exclusively on this line. They were part of 40 coaches purchased in 1953 that were divided between Lansdowne Division and Eglinton. The old streetcar loop at Glen Echo was the northern terminus of this line. When the Young Subway was extended to York Mills in the early 1970s, the line was abandoned because North Toronto residents didn't want overhead wires on Young Street. The extended trolley coach line would have gone along Young Boulevard to Wilson and along Wilson back to Young at the York Mill subway station. The Young ETB connected with the subway and the other bus routes through the bus bays. Passengers were protected from the elements and could transfer to other buses by walking down to the lower concourse.
Nortown route began in 1954, a few weeks before the Young Subway was opened. This line used the smaller T3 Brill coaches that had 44 seats. The Nortown route ran west along Eglinton and turned north on Avenue Road to Otter, which was the city limit, and later was extended to Roe Avenue, a couple of miles south of the 401 freeway. East of Young, the line ran along Eglinton to Mount Pleasant and turned north along Mount Pleasant to the city limit at Doncliffe. Suburban municipalities lost out on electric bus service because in those days, riders had to pay another fare to ride in the suburbs. Thus, ETB service in North Toronto was confined to the city. Talk of abandoning Eglinton Division ETBs had been going on for at least a decade. And if ETBs are to be retained, this division will not have them. I first videotaped the Eglinton Division lines in 1986 when there was talk of abandonment then. In the fall of 1991, I once again went out to record the end of operation.
During Christmas of 1989, two Edmonton Brown Bavaria electric buses were brought to Toronto for testing. They ran for a few weeks on the Nortown East Line, where they were evaluated. After the tests were completed, a total of 40 coaches were leased for three years. This was the only time Edmonton ETBs ran out of Eglinton Division. After the tests and evaluations were completed, the two coaches were transferred to the Lansdowne Division. The Mount Pleasant line was the first trolley bus line in Toronto. It was operated from 1922 to 1925 and was abandoned when the St. Clair streetcar was extended to Mount Pleasant and Eglinton. In the mid-1970s, ETB service was reintroduced to Mount Pleasant when the St. Clair streetcar was cut back to the St. Clair subway station at Yonge Street. <laughs> 